Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Car, and I have something very special for some of you out there. We've been getting emails and letters and burnt signs on our walls saying the same thing. You want more technical information when it comes to vehicles like this. This is the 2015 Subaru WRX STI. So, coming up next, we have everything you ever wanted to know about the Subaru WRX STI for 2015. And... You should sit down, get some popcorn and a drink because this is an hour long video, baby. Check it out next. Okay, uh, for those of you that don't know me, don't know me, I'm Todd Hill, the car line manager for WRX and STI, and I'm also the last obstacle between now and you guys driving the car out on the track or on the course. So I'll try to be brief, give you guys a good background on the car, and then uh, we can get out and have some fun. Uh, first, a uh, little background, uh, starting with the, uh, uh, the kind of overall history of the car. Uh, the WRX and STI originally were created uh, starting in 2001. And, uh, sorry, this uh, monitor is flicking out. Uh, anyway, so uh, starting in uh, 1992, uh, the first gen WRX was created, and then that evolved, of course, into the STI. The focus was originally uh, uh, winning in WRC rally competition, and we did achieve uh, manufacturer championships in 95, 96, and 97. A little bit later on, our motorsports focus shifted to uh, 24 hours of Nürburgring starting in 2008, and we did achieve uh, class victories in 2011 and 2012. Uh, on the U.S. side, we continue to sponsor our SRT USA program. We've had seven uh, Rally America championships since 2006, and we've continued to participate in Global Rally Cross. Overall, the motorsports involvement helps WRX STI evolve as the ultimate performance Subaru. In terms of sales history, uh, the, eco the economy, uh, kind of the negative economy starting around 2008, really affect all performance and sporty cars uh, negatively, uh, pretty strongly. But uh, starting around 2010, things picked up pretty much across the, the sporty car segment. But uh, also with us in particular, in 2011 model year, we launched the STI sedan, we brought that back, and the wide body WRX, and since then sales uh, continue to increase for us with 2013 being one of our best sales years ever for STI. I think only 2003 and 2004 outsold uh, last year's STI sales. In terms of the buyers of WRX and STI, uh, basically the STI buyer uh, demographically is very, very similar, almost the same as the WRX buyer. It's kind of an ad attitudinal choice. The WRX buyer, or the STI buyer is looking for a little more performance, a little more capability, and they're willing to pay a little bit extra for that for that capability. But in terms of age, it's the same. Basically, same male percentage, a little bit higher for STI, but roughly the same. Similar, uh, married, a little bit higher. Median income, a little bit higher. Education, very similar, uh, both uh, bachelor's and graduate degrees. So basically, same guy. It's really uh, it's really kind of an attitudinal choice. <laughs> Um, right. So, uh, <laughs> all right, okay. um, so the other, the other thing is that, uh, you know, with the WRX and STI, uh, the guy buying the car, the guy in the, the guy in the picture here, most of these guys, they maybe, uh, they don't modify the car, modify the car a little bit, they don't get too crazy, uh, but we do see a lot of uh, the second and third owners of the cars uh, really uh, go crazy with the cars. We love to see the, uh, the aftermarket support and the enthusiasm around the car. And it is a great platform for modification. But that, uh, that owner of this car is often different from uh, the, first, the first guy uh, here buying the car uh, new. So just a point to make there. Uh, overall, the sales forecast for Compact 40 cars we see sales uh, improving from 2010, well, they improved from 2010, 2011, 2012, and we see that continuing over the next few years. It's a small segment, but we do expect it to continue to grow uh, in the foreseeable future. 
In terms of our projection of sales mix of WRX and SCI for Subaru's uh, lineup in 2014 calendar year, we see WRX and STI making up about 4% of sales, which is actually it's a, it's a pretty significant number in terms of units because our sales volume uh, overall, our whole portfolio volume is up quite a bit, uh, quite a bit in recent years. And so WRX and STI, even though the percentage is small, the actual sales volume relative to the past is very strong. Internationally, STI in the U.S. is about 40% of STI uh, global sales, followed by Japan about 32%, and then Canada, Australia, and everybody else. That's a little bit different than WRX. WRX is sold in fewer markets, so the U.S. market is about almost 80% of the global sales in WRX, 40 for STI, so a little bit different there. Overall product concept. Essentially, STI, like WRX, is going to be sedan only. It's going to have much more differentiation from Impreza, as with WRX, than the previous generation car. And that focus on the one body style did let us to maximize our engineering resources and develop the car to a higher level than if we had to have two body styles. And in terms of choosing the sedan, WRX was about 50-50 sedan and wagon, or sedan and five door. And STI, however, has been almost two-thirds sedan, so much stronger preference for sedan body style among STI buyers. And in terms of the uh, kind of the positioning, STI is, of course, Subaru's best-riding, high-performance car. WRX uh, manual transmission and automatic transmission, both high-performance and great value. In terms of our development concept, we're calling it pure power in your control. So looking kind of back in the past, the WRX STI has always had good power. It's always had very high handling limits. But where we felt we could improve the car was kind of that uh, finer level of control and handling to give you the feeling of a real sports car and to basically give the car the ideal balance between both power and handling and control and help the car be faster in most cases, uh, and for more drivers in more conditions. And the side, you know, kind of the side benefit of that, of that is it's also more fun to drive for more drivers and in more conditions. In terms of exterior styling, uh, like WRX, all the panels below the greenhouse are new. The doors, the quarters, the front fenders, the hood, the front and rear fascia are all unique for WRX and SCI. We do feature, of course, our big wing on the rear uh, on all STI models. So next up, we'll talk about the handling of STI. That's the big story for us here, uh, how much better you're going to find this car handles when you get out on the track or on the, the, the road today. Uh, starting off with the steering. So this STI retains hydraulic power steering. It's going to give you uh, good steering feel. We've improved the assist characteristics and we've strengthened the torsion bars for more precision and again more feel. feel. The steering ratio has changed. It's quicker now from 15 to 1 to 13 to 1. That's quicker than the one in the WRX and quicker than uh, last year's STI as well. The gearbox mount bushings also made almost four times stiffer. That is also going to help steering responsiveness and steering feel. And uh, lastly, we have our D-shaped steering wheel. It's going to give you a more uh, sporty feel, more comfortable wheel to use driving the car. Next up, front suspension. Pretty much every component on the front suspension has been redesigned or uh, enhanced, modified, strengthened to make it stiffer and take uh, kind of suspension uh, slop out of the system, give you a much more precision uh, suspension system. And to that, uh, starting at the, at the top, we, uh, we have the inverted front struts, which add stiffness. Those are unique to STI models. And we've stiffened the cross members. The control arm bushings are made more rigid. The stabilizer bar diameter is up from 21 to 24 millimeters, so up by three millimeters. Spring rates are up 22% versus the outgoing car. Our transverse link rear bushings are 10 millimeters lower. That's going to improve agility. 
We've added stiffening plates on the support front mounts. That's going to give you more linear handling response. The front control arm plate has been thickened. That's going to help with rigidity. It's also going to help reduce some road noise. Overall, kind of in summation of all these uh, improvements, the lateral stiffness of this front suspension is going to be up about 14% versus last year's STI. Moving on to the rear, it's the same story. All of the parts have been enhanced, improved, strengthened, and uh, refined for better suspension performance. The subframe and trailing link bushings were stiffened. The rear lateral outer bushings were changed to a racing type pillow ball bushing. Rear springs were stiffened 6%. The rear stabilizer bar goes up another millimeter, now 20 millimeters. The rear subframe front mounts uh, were lowered uh, for the lateral links, and uh, three millimeters of initial tow wind was added. That's going to help the lateral loads build up quicker, and it's going to give you a better steering response. We've added some supports to the rear subframe, and the shock mounts on the rear lateral arms, arms are moved outwards about 10 millimeters. Uh, overall, kind of like the, the front, the summation of all these improvements is going to enhance the rear lateral stiffness, that's going to go up about 38% versus the outgoing car. And together, the improvements on the front and rear suspension are going to improve the overall car's roll stiffness by about 24%. Uh, next up, the part the suspension mounts to was also critical, so to that we beefed up the structure, we increased our use of high strength steels, we're going to get a structure that's similar in weight to the outgoing one but it's significantly stronger. So you can see uh, significantly higher usage of the, uh, the, uh, the 590 and 980 MPA steels. Looking at the, uh, the diagram here, we've got our hot stamp steel, the strongest steel we've got on the eight pillar and on the roof panel. Those are mostly enhanced for crash performance, as well as the, uh, the 980 on the side, that's mostly for side impact performance. But you see the 590 all in the structure around, that's all uh, kind of higher strength steels to give you that stiffer structure. But what we, also, we were also able to do, and this is one of the areas where we said there's more differentiation from when present before, it's not just visual differentiation, it's some of the stuff you can't see. So all these enhancements to the structure here, basically everything shown in red, uh, for the most part, are enhancements over Impreza. These are the types of structural enhancements the last generation car didn't receive. So this is, uh, this is more of that differentiation. Torsional rigidity is up about 40% versus the outgoing car and versus Impreza. Bending rigidity is up about 30% versus the outgoing car and 10% versus Impreza. As you can see, all the uh, mounting points are uh, strengthened, uh, or the where the suspension mounting points are strengthened on the, on the front and on the rear, uh, on the floor, around the, the top of the suspension mounts. And there's actually a car uh, at the track that's kind of a cutaway car. And it has all these parts on it. Most of them are, are highlighted in red paint and a couple other colors. You'll be able to see all these reinforcements when you get to the track. New feature for WRX and STI is active torque vectoring. Uh, you guys may have seen this uh, in our, our WRX uh, info, but this active torque vectoring system is going to improve near limit cornering performance. It's going to apply the brake to the inner front wheel. That's going to send some more torque to the outer front wheel. That's going to help give the car more neutral steering and higher cornering limits. It's a little bit different than the active, uh, the active torque vectoring system. It's a little bit different than the VDC system. The VDC system is kind of watching uh, yaw rate and uh, some of the other inputs in the car, and that's trying to determine whether the car is going where the driver intends or not. And if it senses that the car has become unstable, that's going to break all four wheels to bring the car in line, which is different than the active torque vectoring, which is supposed to increase the handling performance of the car. Next up, our multi-mode VDC system has three modes. Uh, on, traction, and off. So on is the default mode. Traction mode is essentially off. Uh, the VDC system is, is not going to intervene unless the, the car really, really, really gets out of control. 
and the traction control system is off, but the torque vectoring is still active. So on a track environment, that's probably the setting you want to use because it's essentially everything is off except the uh, torque vectoring system. And then lastly, we have off, which is everything is off. Uh, that's probably more useful when you're trying to get out of mud or snow. And there are a few, I guess, a few situations where you would want everything off on a track. But in general, uh, traction mode is probably going to be what you'd want to use. So uh, out on the, the track today, again, probably depending on uh, your comfort level with, the, with the, your driving on the track, you would probably want to keep that in on or traction mode. Uh, next up, emergency handling. So in, in terms of emergency handling, this is uh, Consumer Reports double, double Lane chest, the Double Lane Change Test. And we wanted to use that as uh, one of the handling uh, criteria to compare to other, other cars. And so here we have a chart on the, on the right side. These are all charts, or these are all cars that were tested by Consumer Reports at their facility. And we kind of recreated their track at our facility and tried to match things up as best we could. But uh, in the end, it's, it's a little bit apples and oranges because it's our cars and our drivers versus their, their uh, our track and uh, their cars and their drivers on their track. But we did try to match that up as best we could. And in our testing, we were able to significantly improve the performance of the WRX and the SDI, uh, both shown at the top, versus the outgoing car and versus our competitors. We did that through improving the tire grip, the more rigid chassis and suspension tuning, and the improved and EDC control. Next up, the lateral acceleration limit was enhanced with the new car. And one thing I want to point out here on some of these, these other charts, we have a bunch of our competitors uh, here, and we've also got a, a Porsche 911. And that, that's there not because we view it as a competitor, but we recognize that that car is one of the benchmarks as one of the best handling cars at any price. And so we wanted to uh, use that as kind of an internal benchmark to, for STI, just in terms of handling precision. Not that we view it as a, as a real competitor to STI, but just uh, our target for handling was very high with this car, and we wanted to, to compare it to some of the best. Anyway, lateral acceleration limit in our testing, uh, 0.98 uh, versus 0.92 on the outgoing car. Body roll about 16% less in our test here, which is uh, at uh, five meters per second squared. Again, lower than all of our competitors, uh, not quite as low as the 911, but lower than all of our competitors. And in line, uh, just a little bit less than the payment in this test. Moving on to agility. So uh, we are considering agility being how quickly the car reacts to steering inputs. So if you look at the chart uh, on the left here, so the, uh, the, blue, the blue line is basically the steering wheel's turn, starting uh, at zero seconds. And then the pink line is how quickly the car actually starts to move after the steering wheel's turn. So the shorter that delay is, the more quickly the car is responding. So all of the tuning that we did to the steering and the suspension, take all, kind of all the slack out of the system, has made the car respond much faster almost three times uh, faster in this test than the outgoing car, significantly quicker than our competitors, quicker even than BRZ, and in line uh, even with the 911, which is actually a very strong achievement because in terms of the 911, the engines in the back, all the weights in the back, there's a much smaller inertial component to moving the front of the car than there is in the WRX and STI. So they, they kind of have an advantage here. Uh, in terms of turn-in, uh, the car is going to have much better turn in, and even in a high G situation, it's going to be even better than BRZ. And looking at it uh, here, this is uh, data we took uh, going around the current turn uh, with a lateral acceleration of 8 meters per second squared, and then we turned the wheel even farther in. You can see STI uh, significantly better than most of our competitors, better than last year's car. Not quite as good as the 911, but again, because of the rear engine design, they do have an advantage in this type of evaluation. Next up, we'll talk about the track ready performance of the STI. First up, the engine. The car features our 2.5 liter EJ series engine, which is gonna offer 305 horsepower at 200, 290 foot-pounds of torque. 
uh, maximum boost pressure 14.7 psi, uh, 93 octane fuel uh, required. Uh, in terms of our transmission, uh, we continue to use our six speed heavy duty close ratio manual transmission. So this is not the same transmission that's in the WRX. WRX got a six, six speed manual uh, for 15 model year, but this is the heavy duty STI uh, manual transmission. It retains the parallel linkage for the shifter, so it's not a cable shift transmission. Uh, the ratios themselves are unchanged versus the 14 model year car. But we did make a few improvements to the transmission to improve shift feel. Uh, we revised the detent mechanism. That's going to help with the tackle feedback and give you some smoother shifting. And we changed uh, some of the profiles on the shift rods and some of the internal pieces, again, to help uh, the shift feeling. And uh, also, uh, we made a couple other changes to the reverse idler gear and some springs inside to help reduce vibration and noise and improve the, the quality uh, feeling of the car. Uh, next up, SI drive. So like the outgoing uh, model and the last several years of STI, the new car is going to feature SI drive. We've got three operation modes, the I, uh, intelligent mode. That's going to give you smooth power output. It's going to give you the best fuel economy. It's going to be something that's more useful for kind of around town driving and situations where you don't want full power output and you don't, uh, you don't want to, uh, to drive aggressively. And if you're in adverse conditions, it's going to give you a little bit more uh, fine, fine control over the throttle input. Uh, next up, sport mode. That's going to be much more responsive to accelerator input. It's going to give you more linear acceleration. And this is kind of the ideal uh, mode for normal use in the STI. And then lastly, sport sharp. That's going to give you the sharpest throttle response regardless of the engine speed. And that's going to give you the best uh, result for twisted roads or performance driving. So probably for most cases today, you guys are going to want to try Sport or Sport Sharp, but uh, definitely feel free to play around uh, with all the modes. Uh, next up, uh, one of the things we did do to the engine, uh, we made the uh, engine much more responsive through ECU tuning of the boost pressure control and some other variables. It's going to feel much more responsive than the engine and last year's STI. And basically, 25% uh, acceleration input is going to give you more acceleration and response than 50% in the last car. So I have a chart here on the right. And so in uh, I mode, at uh, 40 miles per hour in third gear, if you give it uh, 20, in, uh, the 14 model year car is in blue, the 15 model year car is in pink. And so in the 14 model year car, this is 25% uh, acceleration, and then in the 15 model year car, this is 25%. Uh, so you can see uh, more acceleration response than 50% in the outgoing car. And that's also true in S mode, same deal. 25% more acceleration uh, response, or 25% accelerator input is going to give you more acceleration response than 50% in the outgoing car. And then uh, in Sport Shark, uh, basically the same thing, although uh, in all cases and in Sport Shark, at 100%, uh, it's going it's to give you 100%. So the, the response and the maximum floor uh, condition is going to be uh, roughly the same. However, in the, uh, kind of the lesser pedal positions, it's going to be more responsive. Overall, the engine just, is just going to feel much more ready to go uh, than the outgoing car. We also added our sound creator. Uh, this is something that was used in the BRZ. We brought it into STI. This is going to bring uh, sound from the engine into the, uh, into the interior of the car using pulsations from the intake system. It's going uh, to bring sound into kind of a, a filter. It's going to filter out some of the sounds you don't want to hear and uh, allow some of the sounds you do want to hear. It's going to bring those into the car, bring uh, more of that STI sound into the car. With this system, it's a purely mechanical kind of a setup. There's no electrical components. There's no sound generated or created. It's just transferring the, the actual sound from the engine into the car. So nothing, uh, nothing but the actual engine sound here. Next up, like all Subarus except for the BRZ, we've got our symmetrical all-wheel drive system. It's always on. It's transparent in operation. It's very efficient with minimal powertrain losses. 
It's always going to help the driving dynamics regardless of the weather and surface conditions. And it's going to give you added traction for full capability of the chassis. You know, all power is going to be going to all four wheels basically all the time. However, with STI, we do have our driver control center differential version of our symmetrical all-wheel drive system. This is our most performance-oriented Subaru system. It's customizable all-wheel drive performance that can be done to suit the driver preference or the conditions at hand. It features a planetary uh, gear type center differential with an electronically controlled transfer clutch to manage the front and rear torque distribution. Nominally, that distribution is 41% front, 59% rear. That rearward torque bias is going to give you more handling agility. It's also uh, continually adjusted based on driving conditions when it's in automatic mode. And that torque distribution can vary uh, to 50-50. So from 41-59 uh, to 50-50. And that's done uh, through the, uh, the center differential, which is mechanical and electronic limited slip uh, differential. There are three automatic and six manual modes. Uh, this is uh, similar to the outgoing car. The electronic differential lock is varied through the system inputs of yaw rate, steering angle, lateral G-speed, and throttle position. And the total lockup is based on the combination of the mechanical and electronic LSD. Uh, in general, the mechanical limited slip differential in the center is going to react first, uh, and then almost immediately following, the, electro the electronic uh, LSD is going to react and, uh, and help manage things. In terms of the settings, we've got three auto modes, six manual modes. For the most part, you'll, you'll want to use the auto modes. Uh, Auto plus, auto, and auto minus. So auto plus is generally best for driving on slippery roads and vehicles and gives you more stability with the car. Auto minus is going to give you better steering response uh, for smoother driving. And auto is kind of the, the all around uh, kind of best setting. So in general, what's happening in these modes is when you're in auto plus, the system's going to be more aggressive in sending torque to the front wheels, and in auto minus, it's going to be more or less aggressive in sending torque to the front wheels. It's going to keep more at the rear wheels for longer. In terms of the manual modes, the lowest setting uh, has the initial limited slip torque uh, minimized. Only the mechanical uh, limited slip differential is, uh, is active. Uh, that's going to give you best, uh, the best high grip performance. And then in the highest setting, the lock setting, that's going to give you uh, best performance in slippery conditions or good stuff. But in general, uh, today, uh, you'll probably want to use the auto mode on the street and probably want to use the auto minus mode on the track. In terms of power to weight, uh, STI is a little bit different than WRX. There's uh, fewer direct, uh, direct and obvious uh, competitors. But uh, compared to some of the cars we see as our competitors, we have a power weight to weight advantage. Uh, uh, we retain that versus the outgoing, as we do with the outgoing car. And in terms of acceleration, in our own internal ex acceleration tests uh, with our test engineers, uh, we're we are seeing 5.1 0 to 60. That's the same as the outgoing car, um, but it's worth noting that our, our engineers are typically very conservative, much more so than some of the third party uh, testing. So we, would, we wouldn't be surprised to see that number be lower in some of your, uh, your, guys, uh, your guys' testing. Um, in the end, it's, just, it's the same as the, the current car. And uh, also, of course, the symmetrical all-wheel drive system is going to help us get a significantly quicker 0 to 60 acceleration. In terms of brakes, the WRX STI does feature the Brembo braking system with the posed piston calipers, four pot front, two pot rear. We added a high response booster with improved output characteristics. That's going to give you a more solid and linear uh, feel and it's going to improve the responsiveness of the braking system. Also, uh, to help the, the feel of responsiveness, we added a larger master cylinder uh, to the car. And lastly, we added our brake override system. It's something that uh, we've been in the process of adding to all of our models, and they've been updated or 
redesign. And that's going to cut engine power in the cases where you're pressing both the accelerator and the brake at the same time to prevent unintended acceleration. And the use of this system, it is programmed so that uh, it's, it's probably not going to intervene if you're driving the car aggressively on the track and maybe you touch both pretty quickly, it's not going to intervene. So you probably won't ever have this uh, it's system. sustained, right? If you yeah. sustain the brake, it's sustained. Yeah, so there, there's a lot there's a lot of parameters to go into activating this, but but generally if you if you press both the brake and the accelerator really hard for a while, it's gonna it's gonna shut you down. But generally you're pressing the brake hard or the accelerator hard, even if you're using both pedals, you're using one much harder than the other. So, so if you're a left foot brake and tap the brake to bring you it's not gonna interfere there. And uh, with the, the braking system, you can uh, see here, the enhancements to the braking system are going to make the brakes feel much more like the brakes you would, you would expect in a sports car. On our chart here, we've got several models for comparison. You can see uh, STI here in red, similar uh, in, uh, in many ways to both the Cayman S and the BRZ, which are true sports cars, much more so than our other competitors here. Next up, aerodynamic enhancements. So with the new generation car, the overall CD is lowered about 9% versus the outgoing car. 0 0.063 down to 0 0.329. That's a little bit worse than WRX, which is 0.324. Uh, that's due to the larger wheels and tires, and also the wing. However, the difference is very small, it's 0 0.005. It's a really, really small difference. Some of the enhancements we made, uh, the floor undercovers were lower, and we made the uh, kind of tire flaps and mud guards larger to help bring the air around the tires. In terms of the rear wing, uh, you can see here on the left, you can see with and without the wing, the effect of the airflow. You can see it's not really generating turbulence, it, it is redirecting the air and generating downforce. On the right, uh, we've got a chart to show kind of where we stand and. We can't, unfortunately, we can't share the, the, the numbers with you, but just in terms of relative performance, you can see the STI with no rear spoiler, and then uh, adding that rear spoiler, it's going to bring you past the, uh, past the zero mark. So this is the transition from lift to downforce. So the, the spoiler is functional, it is generating downforce, and it is helping stability at speed, as it's done with all generations of STI. In terms of the wheels, We've got 18 by 8.5 inch uh, cast aluminum alloy wheels as standard equipment. They're 15% more rigid. That's also going to help the suspension performance a little bit. They're about 2.5 pounds lighter than the wheels on last year's car. We also have available 18 by 8.5 forged aluminum alloy BBS wheels. These are two point, or about 2 pounds lighter than the cast wheels and offer the same rigidity. So these wheels are Equipment, standard equipment on limited models and also featured in gold on the launch edition model. The bolt pattern is unchanged 114.3, but that is now shared with WRX. And lastly, the wheels are a little bit more aerodynamic in design, which is going to contribute a little bit to fuel economy. In terms of curb weights, uh, WRX ended up picking up a little bit of curb weight, but STI is basically the same as the outgoing model. There's only about two pounds difference between the base STI of 15 model year and last year. Uh, we did pick up additional equipment, rear camera, satellite radio, knee airbag, color display. We had some interior enhancements, the structural enhancements, the NVH enhancements. We got all of those and the weight went up only about two pounds. Uh, on, on the limited model, it is up about 27 pounds and that's due to the, uh, the nine speaker Harman audio system and the addition of a power driver's seat. Next up, we'll talk about uh, all the other parts of the STI that make it an everyday sports car, one that you can use uh, all the time. In terms of packaging, body length is similar to the outgoing car, but the cabin inside is much bigger, and that's aided in part by a longer wheelbase, which is about an inch longer. The, ba the A pillar has moved forward about eight inches at the base compared to the outgoing car. That's going to help visibility and spaciousness uh, feeling on the inside. 
The shoulder line, the shoulder room is up almost one inch front and rear. Total passenger volume is up from 105.9 to 108.6, and rear leg room significantly uh, is up almost two inches. So much more room in the back for passengers and cargo than before. Another part of that is uh, entry and exit. Um, probably not a, a, a first priority with WRX and STI buyers, but it does make the car much easier to live with. The addition of the partition side door windows on the front and the rear doors make the openings much larger than before. You can see here, this is a door opening on the, the previous generation car. We added that partition glass, the opening comes back, I think it's about five inches. So the opening itself uh, goes from 12.9 to 18.9 inches, so much wider, much easier to get you know, people and cargo and stuff into the back of the car. And also, we've got a lower step in height by about an inch. Uh, just makes the car a little bit easier to get in and out of. In terms of the cargo capacity, the trunk volume is now 12 cubic feet. That's going to give you enough room uh, to carry four golf bags. So if there's an STI owner out there that plays golf, he'll be able to take three of his friends and everybody can have a golf bag. The float floor is lower and flatter. The trunk opening itself is wider and the hinges are moving a little bit more out of the way make the car much more functional and much easier to use than a lot of competitive cars and versus the outgoing car. In terms of the interior styling, a lot of differences with this car versus Impreza, much more so than in the past. Everything here in the orange is different from the, uh, the Impreza, but also versus WRX, the center console area is going to be unique. The seats will be Alcantara with red highlights, and the door panels and stitching is going to be unique for STI. And a few other uh, bits and pieces on the inside will be different as well. And like WRX and like Impreza, a lot of thought went into just all the kinds of things that you would carry with you when using the car every day. Again, probably not the, the first purchase uh, consideration of an STI buyer, but once you get in the car, you're going to find it's really easy to live with. All these pockets and everything are going to, they're very generous, a lot of space, a lot of room for all, of, all kinds of things. Easy car to live with, basically. In terms of the steering wheel, it becomes more performance focused than before. It's smaller diameter, 14.5 inches uh, versus 14.75. That's just a little bit bigger than BRZ, which is 14.1. It's now a D-shape with a thicker cross-section and kind of an ergonomic design and softer material. Feels much nicer in your hands. For the seats, sports seats, they are dark gray Alcantara with red leather highlights. They feature larger bolsters than before. We did move to a separated headrest design rather than the headrest being integrated with the seat back. That's going to give you more adjustment more comfort, and it's also going to improve the whiplash performance and rear impact. The backrest is two and a half inches taller for more support, and overall there's a greater range of adjustment, so more drivers will be able to be comfortable in the car. Next up, we add the driver information color multifunction display. A lot, a lot of features in this display. Uh, we have a new screen uh, for WRX and STI, that's the bottom screen here, that's giving you an accelerator position and boost info, uh, current and peak, and uh, so that's kind of a fun, fun screen to, to have in the car. But we've also got other screens that, uh, that are used, useful as well, fuel economy, audio information, VDC information, and some maintenance info. And uh, we've got another 3.5 inch LCD display in the meter. That's going to allow you to get uh, driving time, SI drive info, it's going to give you the DCCD info, and the trip odometer and other info as well. It's an ele electroluminescent cluster, and it does feature, like some of our uh, previous STIs, there is a kind of a built in shift light that can be set to a uh, shift light and shift buzzer that can be set uh, in the settings to activate basically at whatever RPM the, the, uh, the driver wishes. So I think some of the cars may have that, uh, may have that on, so you might, you might notice that. So that is a customizable feature. Next up, audio. 
So we, we know a lot of our, uh, our buyers and fans have been asking for improved audio on WRX and SDI. So for the first time, we're able to bring a branded audio system. This one by uh, Harman Kardon. It's a 440-watt, eight-channel system, uh, nine speakers. A lot of effort went into tuning the sound of this system. I believe it was over 300 hours of tuning uh, by Harman Kardon engineers. In terms of the kind of the performance of the system, it is tuned a little bit differently than our Harman Kardon uh, audio systems and some of the other Subarus. And uh, compared to those cars and to our competitors, you're going to get much more low frequency response. Uh, so it's going to have a little bit more of a little bit maybe more of a club sound, kind of tuned uh, tuned more to what uh, we believe the buyer preferences of WRXR versus say the buyer of the Forester with Harman. Uh, our uh, AHA smartphone connectivity carries over. This is something we added in 14 mile a year and we've been kind of rolling out to all of our Subarus uh, with, with navigation. And that's uh, going to allow you to bring uh, infotainment into your car for your smartphone via the AHA radio app. Now, if you guys want to play around with this, just uh, let us know and uh, we can probably get you set up to try that. Uh, next up, headlamps and tail lamps. So uh, all STI models uh, now feature LED headlamps uh, versus the HID headlamps on the outgoing car. They're going to give you a letter, better, light distribu better light distribution and uh, better visibility, uh, comparatively speaking. And on the rear, all models will feature play detail lights as well. Uh, next section, safety. So all of the uh, safety section here, if you, guys, uh, if you guys were able to make it out to our WRX presentation, all of the safety enhancements for the SDI are also the same as the WRX. Both cars got all of the same safety enhancements. First up, frontal collision management. So the body was strengthened for the new IIHS small overlap test. As you guys know, that's a really strict test. It's really hard to perform well because so much crash energy is uh, sent through such a small portion of the car. Uh, to that extreme, uh, we reinforced a lot of the support structures and revamped the bumper beams. We used more high strength steel in the car on the front pillar. Uh, more specifically, uh, we added uh, an additional reinforcement here on the front bumper beam. And again, the car that's out on the track, uh, the cutaway car, you can see this, that's going to direct the crash energy into the frame rails. We added some additional fasteners to the door, and high strength steel uh, is used all in the, in the area of this part of the car here, and then on the A pillar. The floor pan was also thickened a little bit as well. Here's kind of a, kind of a bird's eye view of the test. And here's the, uh, the barrier, so all the crash energy is basically uh, dispersed into an area right behind the headlight. And here's the uh, kind of the little gusset we added that's helping to bring the energy into the frame rail where it's distributed throughout the structure. Uh, onto the side and rear roof crush. Again, high strength steel on the side sill and center, center pillar. Um, hot press steel in the A pillar and roof panel. Those are all going to help side collision. Uh, in terms of roof crush, the roof crush performance is four times uh, the vehicle weight versus the regulatory requirement, uh, which is three times, so uh, in excess of the, the regulation. But also, you know, worth noting that we're able to do that and we're able to keep the, the pillars pretty small, so the visibility of the car is still very, very good. We added some additional impact sensors uh, for the airbags, and we made some reinforced, uh, we reinforced the brackets on the upper beams of the rear doors. Onto the rear, kind of the bumper beam and body structure is designed uh, and now to distribute energy to both sides of the car if you're in an offset collision. So if, uh, if you get an impact on, on the side of the car in the rear, it is going to transfer a lot of energy to the other side and throughout the structure uh, for better safety performance and rear collision. In terms of the seats, the seats are much more uh, rigid. That's going to improve the performance 
uh, in a rear end collision. The separated headrests, as I said before, do give you better whiplash uh, performance. And the other uh, feature of the seat is the uh, seat uh, kind of the the seat uh, cushion is connected to the structure with an S-shaped hook. So in a really hard rear end collision, those are going to kind of stretch out, and you'll kind of uh, kind of sink into the seat uh, rather than. Uh, uh, having your head come back into the headrest, your whole body is going to sink into the seat and you're going to have a much better result than a rear end collision in terms of whiplash. Overall safety targets and safety features are key features. We're going to have seven airbags with this car with the addition of our driver's side knee airbag. We have our VDC stability control system. We've got our ring shake reinforcement frame. We've got brake assist. We've got the new brake override. All of that is going to set us up uh, to meet our safety performance targets of IAHS top safety pick and uh, five star NHTSA overall rating. And of course, situational awareness is a big factor in, in our opinion of avoiding an accident. So to that, we try to make sure all Subarus have great visibility. We've got uh, the narrow A pillars, which are moved forward. We adopted the uh, front quarter glass and move the mirror onto the door. That's going to give you visibility in this part of the, uh, the car to the front left and front right that's uh, often missing in, in cars. We've got an instrument panel that's about two inches lower and the, the belt line on the windshield or the window on the side is about two inches lower. That's going to help visibility and it's going to help the car feel, you know, feel more roomy inside. And all WRX STI models are going to feature a standard rear vision camera. Uh, next section, just a little bit of info in terms of uh, marketing and kind of communications info. Uh, our primary competitors, as I said before, WRX STI doesn't really have too many direct competitors. That's kind of a, kind of a unique car. Uh, most closely, uh, we see a Golf R and the Lancer Evo as our competitors. Beyond those, uh, not so much uh, uh, direct competitors. We do see some small amount of cross shopping between some of the uh, entry level kind of luxury cars like the A4, the S4, and the BMW 3 Series, and the CLA, and, and also the Mustang. You know, that, that's probably partially just because of sheer volume of Mustang sales. It gets cross shopped with a lot of different cars, um, but much less so for these cars than the, the guys on the left. In terms of our communication target, uh, median age of 36, and so that's actually, compared to the slide earlier on, we are actually, the actual buyer is a little bit younger than our communications target. Usually that's the opposite. Usually your, your uh, communications target is uh, for a younger buyer, but in this case, uh, we've got very young buyers for, for both WX and SDI. Uh, mostly male, a little bit more than half single, and uh, mostly without children. In, two of, in terms of our consumer theme, uh, aggressive handling, and uh, you can see that's kind of uh, kind of shown here with some of our uh, very realistic images here. Uh, next up, uh, model lineup. So we've got uh, two trim levels, a base and limited, and we've got uh, an option package of Navi and HK on the base model, and then that's also uh, keyless access on the limited model. And we also have our launch edition model uh, for the first few months here. So the launch edition model, it's based on the, the, the base STI trim level. We're going to build a thousand cars over the first three months. They're all going to be WR blue. They're all going to get an Alcantara trimmed interior. It's going to have blue highlights instead of the red. And we're going to have the forged BBS wheels uh, from the Limited. These are going to have gold finish. We're going to have keyless access and push button start. And we're going to have uh, a short throw shifter, uh, shorter than the, the shifter in the other STI models. Just a picture of the car here. And then uh, some of the highlights you can see uh, blue versus the red. And the overall interior. So we've got both launch edition and uh, STI. We would basically have all the STI uh, family here, so you'll be able to see the interiors on all the models. Uh, next up, uh, pricing. So 
Uh, with this car, kind of the bang for the buck of STI, it's even better. We've got our active torque vectoring, all the new, you know, the new features, HD radio, Sirius XM, we've got that color multi-function display, the rear vision camera, the LED headlights, you know, and they're now all automatic headlights. We've got the knee airbag, all the structural and handling improvements and the other enhancements to the car. And in terms of pricing, the pricing is the same as the outgoing model. So no pricing increase for WRX STI base model. The limited model is going to pick up the power driver's seat and the Harman Kardon audio this year. So pricing does go up a little bit for the limited, but again, entry level price, the same as the outgoing car. Just FYI, that, that is, um, the pricing is embargoed until tomorrow at 9 a.m. We're going to release pricing um, tomorrow at 9 uh, on WRX and SDI. Don't tweet. Don't tweet. <laughs> really? That embargo was to be Valentine's Day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, <laughs> let's hope that, that, uh, that Nick has no followers. Uh, does that include Destination? Uh, no, Destination is seven ninety five. And uh, I think you guys, uh, WRX pricing is also in the kit, right? So just, uh, just FYI, in terms of WRX, the base price of WRX is going to be up $300. So very small increase for what you're getting with WRX. To what? 26295 Don't tweet that. <laughs> uh, so uh, <clears throat> one of the things we wanted to uh, kind of put together here is uh, uh, just some key differences, WRX, WRX and STI, because a lot of the differences between WRX and STI aren't things that you can really see. You can you can feel them and you can you can get performance from them, but they're not really visual visual uh, things. So we wanted to kind of summarize all the differences here just to make it handy. Uh, onto the engine, we've got the 305 horsepower uh, engine and more power than WRX. We've got the heavy duty close ratio six speed manual, the DCCD type all wheel drive system the high-performance sport-tuned suspension with inverted front struts. We've got the Brembo braking system, limited slip front and rear differentials. We've got a quicker steering ratio, 18-inch wheels. We've got the functional rear spoiler. We've got the leather and Alcantara seating uh, with the red highlights, dual zone climate control, there's unique components on the center console. And on the exterior, all the models are gonna feature the, the LED headlights and the turn signal mirrors. So this, are, this is not all the differences, but these are kind of the, the key differences between the two. So uh, kind of in summary, why STI? We've got the track ready performance with our 305 horsepower uh, engine, our heavy duty six speed manual transmission, and our DCCD all wheel drive system, and our Brembo braking system. So we've got several, you know, several competitors you know, offered the track ready performance. We've also got our all wheel drive capability a lot of cars offer that. Uh, that's going to help us get tenacious handling. It's going to give it, and, and that combined with our high performance suspension, our quick steering ratio, our active torque vectoring, and stiff, stiff and structure, all going to help the handling performance uh, with the all wheel drive system. And we have versatility and affordability. So, relative to the performance you get from the car, uh, the car is very, very affordable. It's also very versatile, easy car to live with every day, to drive every day, to do everything you want uh, with, your, with, any, with any car. Uh, large passenger volume, good cargo volume, folding rear seats, a lot of utility. But very few cars offer all of those features together in one car. And that's what STI brings to the table. And with that, it is the best performing, best handling, best STI ever. So folks, did you recover? I know it's a really long presentation, but it tells you pretty much everything you want to know about the Subaru WRX STI for 2015. For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan Adlin, and I will see you next time. <laughs>